Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. I have a real treat for you tonight and I'm going to be talking about the Sierra Sounds by Ron Moorhead. So back in the early 70s, Ron and I think it was like five other hunter friends of his, they would go out to this location that, well they don't like to disclose, all I know is that it was in the Sierra Nevada mountains, it was between Lake Tahoe and Yosemite, I believe. And it was about an eight mile trek in, so it was really, it was off the beaten path, very hard to get to, rough terrain, just out in the bush. I guess the guy who was actually recording the sounds, his name was Al Berry, and you know, he did a lot of things to try and prove that it wasn't a hoax. Like he would be going through people's backpacks on the trip looking for like wires and radios to, you know, try and find out if they were communicating with another group who would have been the hoaxers. But nothing was ever found and they were able to capture these sounds like quite often. And I guess Ron had traveled out to this location every year since, or at least tried to. And so his collection of recordings is quite vast. And I have two of them that I'm gonna play for you that Ron sent me himself. So I have permission to use them, and yeah, I don't know, they're very, very strange and they're super creepy. Like, if I heard these sounds in the wilderness and I was by myself, first of all, I wouldn't get any sleep, and the first sign of daylight, I'd be packing my stuff and I'd be getting out of there, probably. They're just kind of unsettling, at least I think they are. Like, Ron and his friends must have had balls of steel to be able to, to stick around and to go back year after year. I think they're creepy. So here we go. The first one I'm going to play for you is called Samurai. And I guess it's called that because they believe it has kind of an oriental sound to it. I just think it sounds scary. So here we go. Very weird, right? Like the first sound is obviously a different voice than the last and it's almost like it's singing something I, I don't really know i'll play it again here but could you imagine hearing that i get a chill just listening to it in my apartment like i don't know it'd be nice to record sounds like that but if i heard it i would be out of there there's no way I'm sticking around. One more time. The next one is longer and it's almost even more bizarre. And the first time I actually heard this, like it really scared me. Let's see. Like, no thank you. I don't know, I guess these sounds were actually analyzed by the University of Wyoming, I believe. And they determined them to have not been like tampered with or pre-recorded or re-recorded in any way. Like they were actually taken on location, I guess. And, you know, they say that they're not able to like recreate these sounds no person can like recreate it because of the range of i don't know tones and sounds is just beyond what a human can do i don't really know much about like language and stuff but it doesn't sound human to me and it, it, it's weird because it almost is like a language of some kind like it's not just noises like a dog barking or a bear 
growling or like a wolf or anything like it's like it's making out its own words i'll play this one again Like it definitely sounds like a mix between an animal and a human or like a chimpanzee and a human or something like that. But yeah, like these creatures were apparently coming up to their camp all the time and they weren't just making noises. They were like throwing rocks and breaking tree branches. Strange thing though, out of like all the times they went back to this location, not once were they ever able to capture like a photograph or an image of any kind. And you know, this stuff all happened at night after the sun went down, so especially back in like the 70s, you didn't have digital cameras, it was all film. So I can see how it would almost be impossible to get an image unless you had like a camera flash and they were close enough to the camp. But I like, I don't think they were close enough where they were like right there. Apparently, you know, they did have a visual on the creatures, like they could see their silhouettes and they could tell that they were really tall, but they were never actually able to to snap a photo off of one. But, you know, that's always the problem, right? The sounds are creepy though, and there's like a lot more of them that I've heard on, uh, you know, podcasts and radio shows that Ron has been on. And they all, they're all equally as weird. I don't know, just probably like it's super interesting and just, uh, I don't know, it sounds unhuman and gives me that little bit of faith that they could be real. Ron sounds like a super trustworthy guy. So he's also got a great voice. Like if you've heard Ron speak, he should be doing voiceover work for like movies and video games because he's got a great voice. That's all I have for you tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I don't know what to say. I think they could be real. I really do, but there's no way to know for sure. Subscribe, like, comment, share. Stay tuned for the next episode of Mountain Beast Mysteries. Thank you.